Good morning, everybody. It's six o'clock in the morning, and we're on our way to Holy Land Sanctuary at Subic, Asia's first Bible-themed sanctuary. It's located in a 15-hectare property amidst rainforests at the fringes of Subic Bay Freeport, and they feature life-size replicas of special events or key events in Jesus' life in Jerusalem. And as I said, it's a 15 hectare area and that's why it's a very spacious place, really perfect for meditation, contemplation, or if you just want to relax, have a personal retreat, reflect, that's a really good place. The way there isn't that long, it's around 160 kilometers from uh, Metro Manila all the way to Holy Land Subic. And also, we're, we'll just practically take expressways all the way there. Nevertheless, I was hesitant to, to, to make uh, a feature at this point, but the management of Holy Land Subic was so kind to inform me that I would actually be the only person there. And that's why I, I thought that this would be a good opportunity to do it and I, I feel actually quite safe. So yeah, let's make the most out of this time. There you go, Holy Land Subic, Sanctuary and Biblical Theme Park. My first order of business was to drop by the Chapel of Cana and thank God for a safe journey. The way I see it, there are six major areas in the sanctuary. The first is the welcoming area that includes the Chapel of Cana, the prayer wall, the glorious mysteries, an event's tent, the guest reception, and a restaurant which is currently closed. The second area is the Marian Museum that features statues of apparitions, devotions, and titles of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which are officially recognized by the Catholic Church. The third and fourth areas are paths of the joyful and luminous mysteries that comprise the Via Rosario. The fifth area is the path of the sorrowful mysteries and the way of the cross, which comprise the Via Dolorosa. I assume that this is the area most frequented by visitors during Holy Week, particularly those who want to pray the way of the cross. And the final area comprises the 13 duplex cottages, which effectively make up 26 separate rooms. 
the bishop's cottage, which is basically the suite, and a replica of the Lake of Galilee. After exiting the chapel, I'll first show the cottages and how my room looks like. And then, we'll continue on with our tour by featuring the Maria Museum, the Pilgrim's Prayer Wall, the Via Rosario and Via Dolorosa, and finally end the day with a meal at the Lake of Galilee. The accommodations were themed as cottages in Jerusalem during the time of Christ and had verandas that offered a wonderful view of the bishop's villa, the replica of the Lake of Galilee, and the tall rainforest trees of Subic. My accommodation was neat and tidy. It had water and a kettle and a desk to do some reflection and writing. The toilet was also impressively large. Anyway, I was still in my riding gear and so I had to settle in and have breakfast in my veranda before starting my trek. Our next stop is the Marian Museum. So this is the Marian Museum. This is officially called Mother Mary House of Prayer and Museum. And for those who want to venerate Mother Mary, there are kneelers here so they can pray and contemplate or meditate. So for example, we start off with um, Our Lady of Guadalupe here, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, one of my favorites and the favorites of my family, my kids and my wife, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Piat in Cagayan, and Our Lady of Kaisasai. For those of you who've been watching my, my videos, I actually featured the, the shrine to Our Lady of Kaisasa in Taal. And as you can see, it's actually, each sign actually indicates as well the place where the apparition occurred. This um, image of Our Lady is also quite famous here in the Philippines. It's Our Lady of the Rosary, more commonly known Our Lady of uh, Manawag. And then uh, some of you would also remember, in my west to east journey across Luzon and back, the very first place we actually visited was in Antipolo. And it was um, the shrine to Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage. There are actually more on the outer circle of the museum. And it's actually very calm and peaceful out here. I'll just show you how it looks like. So can you imagine if you were to pray or sit down here to just meditate or just reflect. place is very conducive for doing those things so I just made a quick stop here at the reception area and the chapel area so that's the chapel of Cana and beside it is a depiction of the descent of the Holy Spirit which comes from the glorious mysteries and this is what I wanted to show to everybody this is called the Pilgrim's Prayer Wall. There are various prayers here and they're categorized into six themes. So if you don't know what to, to say or what kind of prayer you'd want to, to, to express, there are certain guides here. For example, here is for general petitions. And then here is prayer for physical healing. Here, the third is prayer for mental and emotional healing. 
then prayer for spiritual healing. We even have prayer for financial healing. And finally, of course, it's not all just petitions. There has to be thanksgiving. And so that's the final prayer here. Prayer for thanksgiving. At my state right now, I guess this is where I'd want to, to be, this particular prayer, prayer for thanksgiving. So maybe I'll just spend a few moments here. So here now, we have the crossroad here to the left. To the left is Via Rosario, which is the mysteries of the rosary. And to the right is Via Dolorosa, which is the way of the cross. So we'll first go to, uh, through the mysteries of the rosary. And it starts with the joyful mysteries. So we're not going to go through each one in detail because there are just too many. But maybe I could just feature a few. For example, here we have the birth of Jesus, which is the third joyful mystery. And it's depicted here in a lovely cave. And as you can see here, you see there the manger where Jesus is, the livestock, Mama Mary, Saint Joseph, and the three kings. So you could actually come here and be here amidst this, uh, the statues and amidst the depiction of the, the birth of our Lord and actually contemplate and uh, use these images here, these statues here, as visual aids so that you could actually feel how it felt on this glorious evening when Christ was born. I also like that these places that feature specific times in Jesus' life are spaced far from each other because it gives you the opportunity to walk and meditate as you go from one place to the next. So for example here, uh, from the place that we visited a while ago, which was the birth of our Lord, right in front of me is the presentation of the temple, and the finally here is the flight to Egypt. I've been searching for this moment One day Searching for this moment Running free, I'll find my home I've been lost and I've been broken Holding on to what I know Let's see if we could actually go up here Okay, everybody, we've reached the top of the hill and
Well, everybody, I'm taking a stroll now to Lake Galilee. And as I'm doing this, I'd like to talk to you briefly as well about the foundress and president of the sanctuary, Marie B. Garcia. The story of Mrs. Marie B. Garcia and the Holy Land Sanctuary is actually a very interesting one. And for me, a very inspiring one as well. Because Mrs. Marie B. Garcia actually had this idea way back in 1992. And despite all the challenges she faced, she never gave up on that dream. Until finally, in 2008, she was able to work with the Aita community here to create this, this sanctuary amidst the rainforest of Subic, uh, right by the Subic Bay Freeport Zone. And then finally in 2012, they officially opened and went fully operational in 2015. Mrs. Mary B. Garcia has actually been battling stage four lung cancer for the last four years now. In 2017, she was told by her doctors that she would only live for six months. But four years later, she and her husband are continuously and vigorously working to maintain and improve this establishment or this place. And that's really amazing. And can you imagine, even under the COVID-19 environment, where a lot of establishments are struggling, including establishments like this one that rely on tourism and guests coming in, they, they still manage to, to, to keep it going. And more importantly, they still manage to support their staff, of which around 80 to 90 percent are people who come from the Aita community in this area. And one more thing that I wanted to mention about this place is the fact that the proceeds, of course, after taking out maintenance and upkeep costs, the proceeds go towards supporting a foundation that supports the education of the youth of the Aita tribes or the Aita communities here in this area, as well as other charitable activities that support poor communities. Well, everybody, that was my brief feature of this place, Holy Land Sanctuary here in Subic. It's not difficult to find because it's right beside the entrance to Subic Bay Freeport at the end of the SCTEX Highway. I think it's a really good place, not just for those seeking for a spiritual journey or those looking for a refuge where they could meditate and reflect, but also for those who want to understand more the life of Jesus or even for those like me who've been wanting to visit the Holy Land in Israel but never had the time or the resources to go there. This place actually gives snippets of that experience. Thank you very much to Maribi and Bobby Garcia and to their staff and supporters for never giving up despite all the challenges and despite the severe difficulties brought about by the COVID-19 lockdown. And thank you for inspiring us to keep the faith. Ciao!